It's January in Washington. It's dreary, it's drizzly, and it's the 47th anniversary of the Roe vs. Wade Supreme Court decision, which legalized abortion throughout the United States. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people from all over the country, many of them high school and college students, pack into buses and cars, armed with colorful signs and ham sandwiches wrapped in aluminum foil for the annual March for Life. And while the media isn't always very kind to them, one kid last year, by the name of Nick Sandman, had a particularly nightmarish experience. The center of the firestorm, what critics characterize as a smirk on Sandman's face. Heightened security that is open-ended for now. Students were back amid anonymous threats of putting them through wood chippers, shooting up their school, locking them inside and burning the building down. It's been one year since the Covington Catholic debacle. But 2020 is a new dawn, and I wanted to get to know directly some of the young men and women marching. Teenagers who still came, ready to show their support for the rights of unborn babies, despite the fact that one viral video could put them in a media maelstrom and unfairly brand them as a household name and villain for life. I grew up going to the March for Life at my home parish of St. James Catholic Church in Charlestown, West Virginia. And this year, in 2020, I went again, this time as a producer with The Daily Signal. The trip from Charlestown to Washington requires an early start, so the kids stayed overnight at the church and got up at 4.30 a.m. to get their day started. And so did I. Are you ready, Tasha? <laughs> I don't know. Do I have any eyebookers? Peter. What? A. What am I supposed to say? Can you tell us what we're doing today? Yeah. We are waking up in this bright, sunny West Virginia day. And we're going to the pro-life march. Um, we're gonna go on the march for life. We're going to the pro-life march. What are we doing first? Eating breakfast and hopefully getting some coffee. It's gonna be lit. We get some breakfast. We get on a bus for several hours. That we hopefully starts this morning. And once we're done that, what are we gonna do? Um, get on eyes. <laughs> Is that what you're wearing? Who, who said that? <laughs> After a two hour bus ride with no heat and a less than stunning road trip soundtrack. <laughs> we arrived at Capital One Arena for the annual Mass for Life. I've been a few times, but the sheer scale of this thing never ceases to amaze me. There are Catholic youth from all over the country, many of them having endured much, much longer bus rides and many more sessions of impromptu karaoke. After mass, it was time to get out to the march itself. And it was here on the streets of DC that I got to have some conversations about just why these people came out to the event. I am here because I want to stand up for the end boy. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a lot of fun to see all these uh, other people that are trying to end abortion. Gotta get those steps in today. <laughs> Gotta get those steps in today. Whenever I encounter someone with a pro-abortion argument, I try to go from, about it from a scientific standpoint. As soon as the sperm meets the egg, there's a whole new being. There's DNA, it has a soul, it has organs, it feels, and it has a brain. It's a human. Well, none of the this group were required by anybody to come here. It's all by choice because we love babies and we really find the need to defend them. You have to live out what you believe. So it's one thing to be like, I'm pro-life, but then stay at home. It's another thing to walk the march and spread the word because you really should act out what you believe to make a difference. So I'm a permanent deacon. Uh, so I'm a married man. I am a father of seven, six, Born one coming. I didn't know that. Yeah, you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this is Matthew, which is not one of my seven, uh, but he's on loan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Say hi, Matthew. Say hi. Matthew just woke up, so he is enjoying the day, though. So we are part of St. James Catholic Church, and we strongly, vehemently believe that all life must be defended. And so we offer our prayers and especially our sacrifices uh, to come down here to march with uh, others of goodwill so that one day all life might be protected in this land. But let's not forget, the Covington debacle was only one year ago. And those kids were put in serious danger by the way the media handled the situation. 
Well, first I was slightly shocked that there would be an incident like this at the march, but that was before I learned all the facts. And once I started hearing more and more of it, I was like, this doesn't really make quite sense. Why would a small kid do this to like an older gentleman? Uh, it was pretty ridiculous how they treated him, especially since he wasn't doing anything uh, wrong in the video. You know, I think there's a narrative that unfortunately gets pushed in this country, you know, that us who are for life, that we're bigots or whatever it is, whereas we're really just trying to be a witness. And then when a the full story broke out of what actually happened, like, I was a little surprised, but not really, because I knew the media has a history of blowing things out of the water, and they just did it again. Definitely the MAGA hat doesn't really help. Um, he sort of personifies what the left hates, just Christian boy that likes Trump. If their political and religious convictions had been different, would the national media have been so willing to put them in harm's way? Perhaps if the Covington Catholic kids had been democratic socialists or members of Antifa, the media would have held a more appropriate, neutral position when the video went viral. So were this year's teens scared of being victims of a potentially violent media backlash, as Nick Sandman and his friends were? No, not particularly, because uh, if a situation does happen like that, I'd like to just do what he did and just remain calm, walk away. We are called to be the voice for the voiceless, so we should be out there doing it, and it's the right thing to do. No, I think, I think we all know our, uh, our stance pretty well. I think it's pretty solid. Human life, from conception until natural death, is, is valuable. And it shouldn't be wasted. I feel very safe, and I, if anyone wants to argue with me, I will have a discussion with you, of course, but we are here to save lives from the moment of birth until natural death. We stand for the truth. Ultimately, always, the truth wins. Uh, we have a joyful, uh, youthful, energetic group. That's what we're about. We're trying to be a witness to really change hearts. America stands for something that's absolutely incredible that the world needs more of. It's freedom, but just natural God-given rights of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and absolutely every person in this world needs that. Not one single person said it worried them. When you look around this movement, you see a lot of things. You see a commitment to family, compassion for the less fortunate, and a thriving belief in the American dream but you don't see fear. Even Nick Sandman refused to be canceled, posting pictures of his return to the March for Life. He's also spent the last year fighting back against the corporations that endangered him, with some success. And I think this fearlessness isn't surprising, because this movement is about precisely that, not giving in to fear. It's about the triumph of life, love, and sacrifice over the ugly exploitation that underpins our sexual culture. It's about standing up to the celebrities and politicians and elite cultural forces that tell us that unborn lives don't matter. To these young Americans, they do matter. Everybody matters. And if some multi-billion dollar news corporation wants to cancel them for saying that, I guess they're welcome to try. <laughs>